So let's get right into it. Uh, catch us up with mortgage rates. Where are they going? Are they heading down anytime soon? They're going nowhere fast, right? Like we've been in this, uh, we've been in this around seven, seven uh, percent rut. Uh, I would say for I don't know the last couple of months, really. You know, it was um, kind of in the beginning of July is is when we really saw uh, rates start to take take a move up, and that's when we just got. Uh, we had a lot of the the bond market was inundated with the supply of bonds, which we talk about supply and demand all the time. So when there's a ton of supply to get people to buy them, you got to increase the yields and provide them a greater return if you have more of something than people want to buy. And so in the financial world, rather than discounting them, you make them provide a higher return by charging more on the way that bond is generated. So the bond market just really, that's when we really started getting flooded with that. And that's a lot of that's coming from like, you know, uh, bank liquidity issues and some of the new regulatory standards that the smaller banks have. Uh, and then we also had the debt ceiling uh, negotiations that happened earlier this year where the government's got to start issuing a bunch of bonds. So it's just been a matter of the market absorbing those things. And then we rolled into uh, August, which we knew and we talked about it. We were replacing pretty like, I don't know what the right word, like pretty cool inflation data from year over year. So from last year in the month of July, that inflation data, it was not bad. You know, and it was like a, it was like we took a month off from real bad inflation news then. So we're replacing that information. And so it just didn't look very good. So we just kept getting compounded with bad news, bad news, bad news. And then you have the Fed in Jackson Hole and they're saying that rates are going to continue. You know, they're going to continue to take an aggressive stance or a hawkish stance on rates. And and so it just hasn't been good. So we've been running, you know, it could be on a Monday, we could be locking loans at 6.875. And on Friday, we could be at seven and a half. 7.625 in some cases. So we've really just stayed in that channel and we're kind of bouncing off the top and bottom of that. So, um, and we had a, it looks, I mean, based just on kind of what happened this week, it looks like um, rates came down a little bit. I think the average right now is like seven and a quarter, just maybe a little bit uh, lower than that. So you're right in that there's a lot of people that are actually predicting, you know, that, that rates are going to be a lot lower um a year from now i mean a lot lower i mean that's what i think a lot of people are looking forward to that will if that happens i think next year will be an, an amazing real estate market from 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 a sales perspective for loan officers and for real estate agents um what, what do we need to, what needs to happen in the economy or in the markets for these rates to really start to significantly drop so we need continued um pace of what we've been doing. So inflation has come down considerably, right? And you know, I can and, and you know, I'm a I'm a fitness guy, right? And and you can and I treat, you know, the inflation battle as the same thing as losing weight. If you're 300 pounds and you start a diet and your goal is to get to 200 pounds, that first 70 pounds is real easy. Like that's some like yeah. easy changing of the habits and doing that and you're feeling good and your lifestyle hasn't changed that much, but in order to lose that next 30 pounds, you're going to feel some pain. Like that's where you're going to go through the phases of, I really want some butter on my toast, but I can't. And I would really like to put real syrup on my pancakes instead of fake sugar-free syrup and all those other things that I experienced just this morning. And so we're getting to that point now with inflation where we're down, you know, the core CPI is very low and, and it's, and it's continuing to get closer to that 2% target but it's these last 2% that are going to be really difficult. So we're, we're making progress there and we're going to get better numbers. The uh, lodging cost, housing, shelter, those numbers are starting to get better, especially if you, if you didn't use the average of shelter cost and you actually use what shelter cost is today, the core CPI would be right around 2%. Uh, but you're using this, this rolling average of it. So you've got that, right? So you've got to keep the same path that we've been on with bringing inflation down because that is working. And the other thing, and we saw our first glimpse of this last week is there were three reports that came out. So it's unemployment claims uh, or jobless claims that came out Wednesday. Uh, those actually came in to be a little bit more than we had planned on. Uh, the JOLTS report, which is jobs over labor and turnover. I forget what it stands for. It's Joel, but it's basically job openings that went from 12 million job openings to 9 million job mm -hmm. openings. 
And then we saw our BLS uh, labor uh, the um, employment report, which is the big jobs number and measure of the labor market that the Fed looks at. That number came in uh, slightly, came in right around expectations. Uh, the unemployment rate went up. It was supposed to stay unchanged at 3.5. It went up to 3.8. And um, we start, we're starting to see the, the growth of wages go down or that pace moderate, which is another good thing. And on top of that, um, oh, I lost my train of thought. That's right. Well, I had you... something in there that I kept meaning to get back to, but uh, nonetheless, it's it's starting to see that labor market soften. Oh, then and then uh, they talked about the revision. So from the last two months, they're continuing to re to revise for the worse month after month after month. So we're starting bigger revisions, like fifty thousand jobs a month that were over-reported. Yeah. So as long as we stay on this path, this is what the Fed is really looking for. They're not going to say it yet. Nobody wants to be first, but we're getting there. Yeah, well, I think um, you, you nailed it. It's the labor market that took so long to reflect the, the changes that you just um, outlined. And in my opinion, I mean, that that is exactly what we needed to see for it to actually have an impact in, in, in reflect itself in mortgage rates. Yeah. And because that was the thing that was so stubborn, I think everything else was in line, you know, all, all the CPI numbers that were coming in, everything else that we're looking at uh, would suggest that mortgage rates should reflect a downward trajectory. But the thing that was keeping us stuck was the the labor market. And so now yeah. finally, and we've been saying this for months, you know, the labor market is a is the kind of the last um, indicator before Lagging we start to that, yeah, that's a huge lagging indicator. And we're starting to finally see these labor market reports come in uh, and, and reflect the reality of, of what's happening. And so now with that, it's my belief that, because I was curious what you thought, but my belief is now that the labor market is responding this way, I think you'll see the bond market uh, respond. And I think mortgage rates will start to trickle down here uh, as we get into the last quarter of 2023. That's That's my take on it. Yeah, I mean, current bond prices and and mortgage rates and, and the way this market is is what the Fed wants. Like the Fed is the Fed is happy with this right now. Um, they know that it's going to take a while for people to start feeling this, and and we know that the like we said, the labor market's a lagging indicator. And and there's a couple things coming up on the horizon that are going to hit our biggest spenders too. Um, so you have student payments uh, are going are getting back into the swing of being required this month. And if you look at um, thirty percent of our nation's credit card debt is held by uh, people around forty years old, and they're starting to see like the ninety-day delinquencies on credit cards are starting to tick up. And so mm -hmm. now we're to the point where people have spent their credit; they went through savings, right? They got to a certain point where like, okay, I'm out of savings, so it's time to go to credit cards. And then what they're doing is now they're starting to default on some credit cards. And so these are the things that tell them like, okay, we're getting to this point where money, the money supply is finally getting tighter after all those massive infusions of money into the economy. Like everybody's starting to finally run through that. Um, and, and who knows how long it'll take for the, the Fed to say, okay, finally, we feel comfortable with it. But these things are all starting to happen and, and the market will eventually respond to it. Yeah. And, you know, I've got the, um, the mortgage rate projections pulled up. So Fannie Mae is projecting by uh, Q4, 2023, that rates are at 6.6%. The Mortgage Banker Association has them at 5.9%. So going way under 6%, Steve doesn't like that. And then NAR, the National Association of Realtors, has them at six and a quarter. Uh, and so MB the NBA and NAR are, I think, the most aggressive with their, their forecast. But nonetheless, the average of all three, six and a quarter by, by the, the end of this year. year? Yeah. I and mean, again, I, I know you're sitting in your seat as the mortgage guy, like, man, I'm looking at these rates every day. They're not moving. I just, it's my belief that, again, going back to the labor market, this is, you know, I go back to my mortgage days, right? And it was always the labor market. You know this better than me. I mean, this is your world every day. We were so excited for these unemployment reports to come out because they had the biggest impact on mortgage rates. And yeah. I, I think that you're going to start to see, because that's my question. My question is, what are, so you just outlined a minute ago, all the jobs reports and the labor reports that come out. What are the ones that are coming out here in the next couple of weeks or a couple of months 
that may impact this because it's my belief is as those things seemingly get worse, I think we're going to see rates drop quickly, maybe as fast as they as they rose to get us six in a quarter, six and a half by the end of the year. What's your take on that? I would love that. I know so you love that, family. but you don't you don't believe it. So so tell me. No, tell me. I, um, yeah, I look, look, I've said this before, you know, and, and I tell this to, to loan officers that I talk to, especially that are that are newer or haven't been through some shit. Right. Yeah. Is that every time we go through one of these cycles, they always seem worse than the last one. They never seem like they're going to get better. But somehow when we make it, we come back on our boat full of shrimp. Everybody that's still standing and all the remaining boats it have a, a mate like they flourish. Right. And so it is hard sitting from being in the grind every day and right. seeing like, how the hell is that going to happen? Like, how are we going to get out of that? So if if we continue to see uh, the labor markets, um, if we continue to see the labor markets underperform. So if we start to see those numbers come back down and they continue on that trend, that would be great. I think a lot of what investors are looking at, what the Fed is thinking about is we have we have a couple of things going on right now with fairly large groups of labor right now that are not working. So you have the strike in Hollywood, which is like a, a gigantic union of actors and writers and all those people that are not currently working. Uh, we lost a, a mid-size trucking company, which is also a leading indicator of recessionary um, trends. And so we had some that no, those numbers were a little bit skewed. So I'll be interested to see what the job report looks like coming out the 1st of November or right. uh, October, I'm sorry. Um, and then, you know, the, those that's, I think if, if that number really comes in low and it comes in the way the Fed wants to see it, because it the, the current, the next Fed meeting, uh, there's like a 90% chance that they're not gonna raise rates. That's what all the bets and dot plot charts and all that stuff are saying. Um, so it'll be after that meeting, we're going to get that jobs report. We're going to get CPI next week, which will be a good one because that's so that one we should see a much better core number because we're replacing a high core number from last year. Headline number won't be as pretty because I don't, you know, fuel prices have been a lot higher lately, which is impacting food and uh, energy. So it'll be kind of an interesting one. Um, but it'll be, you know, I think what the the Fed press conference after the next Fed meeting it, is really going to kind of tell us which way things are going to go and how that market's going to respond. So I would like to see that. I actually, you know, if you look at it, remember last year, this timing is like the same thing. It was this time last year that the market's like it was over. Yeah. Housing market's going to crash. Rates are flying through the roof and all these different things. And it's literally the same time of year as we start to go through these transitions. And then in November of last year is when we saw that big drop in rates and which turned into really busy December, January, February uh, in the housing market. So it'll it'll be interesting to see. I would like to see them uh, get down obviously closer to 6%, um, but there's just there's there's just been a lot of outliers that keep coming up. So it'll be interesting to see if if the trend will continue. Yeah, and that's I guess that's my point is, you know, come October, November, just kind of like last year, I think that again, as as these as these reports come out, the markets respond because furthermore, like I'll add this, all three of those organizations, Fannie Mae, the Mortgage Banker Association, and the National Association of Realtors, all three across the board have rates below six percent in the in the first uh, uh, quarter of of next year, twenty twenty four. All of them. And yeah. so, right. So, so all of their chief economists believe that that's where we'll end up and that's not that far away. And so I think yeah. that some of the things you talked about will be the drivers of these rates coming back down. And, and you're right, sitting in your seat, it's probably like, well, dude, I, I, you're, you're, sh you, you're in the bloodshed right now. Like yeah, you, sure. you're, you're pricing all these loans for all these buyers and you're the, it's tough. It's really, really hard. But I think once we unlock this and rates come back down to five and a half, five and three quarters, it's my belief that the market not only will rebound from a sales perspective, but it could be busier than we saw in 2020, 2021, early 2022. Why? Because of what I've been saying for months. And that's now that the consumers have perspective. When things were yeah. so good for so long, you, you kind of lose perspective. But now when we've had this glimpse of the last 18 months or two years of like 
things not being great, interest rates being crazy, if house, housing affordability not great, housing inventory super, super low, a frustrating housing market to say the least. When people have that perspective and it's so close, it's so near um, from a timing perspective, it's like, babe, rates a year ago were seven and a half percent. This is what spouses are saying to themselves. We can lock in at five and three quarters. I think it'll be a mass explosion. Yeah, it would be that I, I do think that'd be the result if if rates do get there. And, you know, it's interesting, you know, you if, if we say, you know, if we quote those economists, you know, people say like, of course, they're going to say that, like they're interested in, you know, the housing market doing better. And, you know, my my argument to that is always like, oh, you think the economist, the National Association right. of Realtors is like, oh, I really hope rates go lower. Like that guy does not care. Like they're That's just right. simply forecasting what. And look, all economics are based on theories and what's happened in the past. And, and so there is there is that part of it. So it's hard to, to make like a real set call. But these are very, very smart people that get paid a lot of money to analyze these things. So I do believe that, you know, and, and you know, for a buyer right now in this market, you know, if we think about what happened at this time last year, and for any agent or, or anybody that's buying a house right now that's watching that this is I am starting to see a lot more concessions. I have like three or four deals within the last two weeks that are contingent FHA purchases. Like they are wow. using FHA loans to buy homes contingent on the sale of their other homes and they're getting these offers accepted, which also tells me that if if you're really stuck on rates, right? If you can't move because of rates, but you think they're going to go down, so you're going to wait for rates. This is the season if you're going to make a move going back to like our cost of waiting analysis is to do the, like you can do the lender buy down. So it's like a two, one buy down where you get a lower interest rate for year one of the loan, get a lower interest rate for year two. And then it goes up that third year by having the seller pay the difference between your note rate and that lowered rate, which we can go into more detail on at a different time and do a whole thing. But there's ways to offset that rate. And then if rates go down in the meantime and you refinance, there's a way to get that money that you paid up front back. Yeah. And so- this is the time that you'll start to see some of these more creative options come out while rates are high and activity is low. Yeah. And, and going back to your point just a second ago is like you, you have all these people that are, are posturing for like what they believe um, will happen with, with the housing market. And the other argument is you have, you have as many people or more spreading the, the fear around the housing market like the, the naysayers or, or the, the housing market haters, right? But here's, yeah. here's I just want to share this because you said it. Like these economists for these major entities, I mean, they're not dummies. You know what I mean? And, and, and so I want to just share one more thing. I've got all the major financial firms and all their forecasts for next year. So we talked about Fannie Mae. They got them at, they have, uh, they're, at, they're under 6%. Realtor.com, 6%. This is all for 2024. Moody's. Five and a half percent. Morgan Stanley, this is average for 2024, 6%. NAR, we talked about it, five and three quarters. Goldman Sachs, 5.9%. Morningstar, 5%. MBA, 5.9%. And so, like, I don't know, like, you don't see any of these major uh, entities saying, well, rates are going up. And so why do I say that? My, my point is, I, you know, when I am talking to the agents that I'm coaching, if you made it through this year, you're just going to, you're going to be so um, happy next year. That, that is my belief that we're going to get as hard as 2023 has been and all the struggles we've been through 2024, I believe will be a really good uh, uh, year for, for all of us. I agree. Something else too, you know, I was thinking about like people that like the housing crash lovers, right? Like people that are adamant that there's going to be a housing crash and they come back and they say like, well, of course you don't want a housing crash. You're in the business. Like you have to understand from like a real estate agent perspective and a loan officer perspective, a housing crash is not bad. That's right. So if you think a housing crash is bad when people have adjustable rate mortgages where the rate is going to triple and those loans were originated based on an imaginary income. We're now originating mortgages where, I don't know what it is, like 90% of mortgages are fixed and they're below 4% or something or 5%. And, and so if, if home values go down 30% or in your upside down on your house, it's still going to be cheaper for these people to stay in their homes 
than it is to go out and rent. Like there's not, there's not going to be this massive wave of foreclosures because there's not going to be a change in their income right? or they're in their payment. There might be in their income. So they go through some of these workout processes with, with instant, with lenders and things like that. From our perspective, like, oh, there's going to be more inventory, you know, like, oh, there's, there's more inventory or there's lower rates or whatever it might be. And it's more transactions. So it's beneficial for a lot of people for housing prices to come down. It's not, it's not going to be this. It, there's just for it to be the same crash we had last time, the unemployment would have to be significantly higher. And we'd have to be at four or 5 million homes available for sale in the market, which we're like, what, 1.1 this month or something? 1.3? Yeah, it's crazy. Yes. And I mean, 60% we're... of, it was like 60% of listings are to be built homes anyway. So when you really right. go through the math. There's like a half a million homes for sale in the United States right now that you could go buy and move into. I mean, it's, it's absolutely very far it's, from that. That's right. That's exactly right. So, um, when, so, so the next big thing is, I mean, what I'm looking for is that, is that jobs report in October. Is there anything in September that you think is significant from a reporting standpoint? Uh, yeah, so we have, um, we have our, so CPI comes out next week and then is, is the Fed, does the Fed meet this month? No, I think I it's- I felt it's, like they met in September, uh, which I could be, I should have this. Yeah, so they meet the 19th and the 20th. So we've hmm. got the Fed meeting. Uh, we've got CPI coming out next week. That'll be a, that'll be a big one. And then obviously we'll be monitoring, um, un, you know, for uh, unemployment claims or job loss claims. So yeah, it'll be, this stuff is going to be hyper in, in focus right now because the Fed has come out and just said, hey, this, everything we're doing now is data driven. So every every piece of data that comes out, they're going to be looking at every punctuation from every, you know, tweet from any of these Fed governors and everything. So it'll be, it'll be kind of high intensity around that. Yeah. Well, listen, we appreciate uh, your insights and uh, all the value you, you're providing to the audience because the whole point of the show is to help loan officers and real estate agents navigate this real estate market so that they can educate their clients and uh, understand what is happening now and in the future. So we appreciate you very much. Hey, man. Thanks for having me.